exactly in the country. Uh, it can be replicated also in South Sudan with the rift between South Akir and the Riek Machar as it were. And even during the, the funeral of uh, the late President Mwai Kibaki, we saw Salva Kiir was here in the country. And uh, we, maybe you can tell us, uh, he actually didn't speak. We saw the, 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 the state minister giving a speech on his behalf. So we were a bit consternated uh, by the fact that is he, is he ailing, uh, what is happening with uh, uh, President Salva Kiir so far. And this is not the first time that we've seen uh, that... Uh, um, people are making speeches on his behalf. So it's sort of a niggling worry that uh, you can clarify if you're privy to any information that we don't really know. But can you speak also to this rift that we have here in the country with our Deputy President and the President and uh, how also that is panning out with Salva Kiir and Rick Machar? Of course, Dubal. Uh, we were all shocked that uh, President Kiir traveled from Juba to Nairobi for the sole purpose of eulogizing uh, President Kibaki and addressing the funeral gathering only for him to be present in the audience and not address. And I ask around, around the sources, uh, it seems like there are two main problems to bow. First is that uh, President Salfa is someone who is not very articulate. Last time he was in Kenya and he was giving address, he ended up saying really uh, terrible things, uh, addressing the deputy president as mad and saying a lot of things that uh, almost caused a, uh, a diplomatic row. Uh, so he's someone very... In Juba, he can blah, blah, and talk uh, to one who's there, he's a dictator, and no one dare to oppose him. But in Kenya, that was a different... ...why he could not address. As it was that he had like a, a throat problem, he had a throat uh, issue. And this issue was not caused because he had been singing. Uh, it was because the night before, our president had uh, consumed uh, quite an uh, enormous amount of alcohol. And when he woke up the next day, he, was, uh, he had a terrible hangover. And he is ailing. There's no doubt about it. His knees are killing him. And with the hangover, he had a terrible headache. He couldn't possibly like walk up and stand, leave alone to think about what to say in addressing a person like, uh, uh, like Kabaki and with that gathering. And this is a pattern that we have observed about for quite some time. I witnessed this for the first time uh, in Washington, D.C. Uh, in 2012, when he came for a meeting with President Obama. The same thing happened the night before. He drank a lot of whiskey, and then the next morning he couldn't wake up on time. And then by the time he got to the meeting, uh, he was quite late. He lost his mind about what he wanted to say, and the meeting ended up being a disaster. It was the last time that he had a, a, a substantive meeting with an American president. And then during the same trip in New York, uh, he had another terrible hangover to the extent that uh, he walked out of the UN headquarters, got lost on the street of New York, walking with his hat on on the street, people taking pictures of him. It was extremely embarrassing for the people of South Sudan. And then finally, in 2014, in Malabo, Equatorial Guinea, he traveled for the purpose of attending African Union Summit, only to be confined to the hotel for three days. Three days, Dubal, consuming alcohol. So the president was terribly incapacitated, is, is no longer really functional, unable to discharge of his duties because of this enormous character flow. And again, with the issue that Dr. Kanenja raised, you have a president that is unable to fulfill his, his duties. You have a deputy that is eyeing his seat and want to take it over by military power, both of whom are, uh, are, are polarizing figures who are unable to take South Sudan forward. So it's, it's, it's terrible. In fact, we wish that we had a cabinet because what is happening with Kier, if you remember, uh, and uh, my friend, uh, there was a Yeltsin in, in Russia. He had that uh, terrible trip where you could not get out of the plane uh, to meet with the president of Ireland because he had drank too much vodka. But at least in Russia, they managed to get him to exit. Here in South Sudan, we are stuck. We have a president that cannot discharge. And it goes again with the point we mentioned before about selecting a deputy and also selecting leadership. You look at the qualities of a leader. There is the respect for the institution of the presidency. All of us, we do our things. We consume, we do those things. But when you are... A, a president representing a country, they come with enormous weight. And it's unfortunate that our president cannot 
uh, provide dignity to the office that he occupies. It's very sad for the people of South Sudan, and we hope that there is a way that we can get rid of this shame and be able to project an image that is more attuned uh, to, our, to our image as a people. Well, it sounds to me that uh, he may be needing a, a re rehabilitation. So the state of uh, South Sudan should consider rehabilitating uh, Salva Kiir if he is alcoholic. Uh, yes, and you know, and it is a pattern that has gone on for quite uh, some time. And to a certain extent, we can't really blame him. Uh, during the war, this was really the behavior of many commanders. Uh, many of them were basically alcoholic. They used to drink. Uh, this is the, the equivalent of the Ugandan warige. This is the terrible alcohol, the one that can sometimes even make you blind. Uh, this is what they used to consume uh, during the war, and uh, this behavior has continued uh, after, after, the, after the independence. And with our president has become a habit. It has also become a way of managing him, Dubal, by some of the people that surround him. Uh, they bring alcohol to him, they will get him drunk. When he's completely drunk, they will bring him degrees to sign, and like a, a days later, he will be wondering, where is Mr. X and, and Mr. X? And then the people will say, "Hey, you, you fire him the other three, the other day on the presidential on, on, on a, through a presidential degree." And then he will say, "When did I do that?" And he, because when he signed that degree, he was completely incapacitated. So we have a president. We have a country that is being run by a criminal clique that surrounded the president and that is using his weakness, this weakness of alcohol, to manage him. Very sad. Very sad indeed. Very sad indeed. Uh, Ahmed Ash, you want to comment on that? Yes, uh, yeah. I, I want to tell Mr. Peter. I, I think it's uh, Dr. Kanenjo. No, uh, Dr. Kanenjo, we'll come to you. Okay. You see, if you're not allowed to drive while you're drunk, you should not be allow allowed to drive the country while you're drunk. And this is m much so uh, when it comes to our continent. Mm -hmm. I think we've made a lot of mistakes uh, when we're intoxicated. But this is not just limited to actually uh, the president's. Uh, you know, of this continent. This is something that is very familiar with a lot of our diplomats and a lot of our representatives whenever they go out there to serve the country in meetings and stuff like that. Rarely do they even show up at the United Nations or whatever conferences they are. They'll be so intoxicated by the following day or by the end of the week they've actually learned nothing so they bring back to the country nothing. Now, that means we should actually have a lot more discipline you know, going forward. However, going then back to what we were discussing,